Please remember, all questions and answers will occur after the presentation. Without further ado, Executive Director Will Barkley and his team will present for the Rockland County Board of Assessment. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Will Barkley. I'm the Executive Director and Chief Appraiser of the Rockland County Board of Assessors. I'm happy to be here tonight to share some of the operational procedures that go through our office and also to give some information as far as for the citizens to help them become more familiar as far as how the board of sessions operate and some of the guidelines that we have to follow in order to be able to provide the services that we provide throughout the county. So we're going to start out by going through and giving an introduction as far as with the team as well as on some of the services we perform and also to give you an idea of how the work flows within our office. And then we're going to follow up with a conclusion and wrap things up. So uh, to start out, as I stated before, I am Will Martin. I am the Executive Director, also the Chief Appraiser of the Board of Assessors. My primary function is to ensure that the Board of Assessors are following all the proper rules and laws that are associated with assessing property within the state of Georgia. So we take that very seriously. We take a lot of pride in what we do. And we want to provide a certain level of service to all of the citizens of Rockland County. So just because you may disagree with your value, understand that we put a lot of work in establishing those values. So we try to work with you the best that we can. We want to stay within the scope of the law as far as establishing those values. So next slide, please. I'm going to introduce part of my team. Uh, I have two deputy directors, and they cover two different separate areas of the county as well as different types of property. First is Deputy Director Lane Cummings. She covers all of the residential properties within Montgomery County. So all of the valuations that occur for residential properties, she handles those. She has a team that she works with as well. Uh, next is Deputy Director Max Terry. He's in charge of the commercial division as well as the exempt and industrial division. He also handles personal property. He's responsible and has a team that assists him with establishing those values from those properties. Last but not least is our administrative manager, Mendez Jeffries. Mr. Jeffries is responsible for the overall operation of the office. He handles all the administrative features that are associated with the office. Okay, next slide, please. The Board of Assessors, as I stated earlier, we pride ourselves in providing a certain level of customer service. So, uh, our mission statement, as it reads, we want to be fair and uniform to every property owner in Rockville County. We don't want to treat anyone any different based upon the location of their property. So, our mission states, the Board of Assessors' mission is to assure all properties in Rockville County are valued equitably and uniformly by serving our customers with excellence. So, we take a lot of pride in doing it. What do we do? We work with all property owners in Rockville County, taxpayers, tax reps, and also the internal and external customers. We value all of those. Next, we assist taxpayers with issues regarding their valuation, their property details, and data, and also homestead exemptions. Our goals, as I stated, it aligns very closely with our mission statement. We want to value every piece of property in Rockville County at its fair market value, no more, no less. We want everyone to pay their fair share. Next slide, please. As I mentioned earlier, there are some of the services that we provide. I'm just going to give you a highlight as my staff goes into further detail on some of these services. Homestead applications is one that's at the top of the list. Most property owners who own and occupy a property can apply for a homestead exemption. There are certain requirements, certain <coughs> guidelines that you must follow in order to qualify for the homestead exemption. The next key responsibility for my department is the tax digest. It's our responsibility to compile all of the data for every parcel that's located within Rockdale County to value that property at its fair market value and also turn that information over to the tax commissioner as well as the other entities within Rockdale County to ensure that we have an accurate and fair digest. Within that digest, we have items that are considered business personal property. Every property owner in Rockdale County is required by law to file a business personal property return. You have until April 1st in order to make that application. A lot of 
questions come into the office as far as ownership. We're going to address the ownership concerns as far as, as well in this particular presentation. Next up, I'm going to bring up my deputy director, Lynn Cummings. She's going to talk about some of the things, how does they, these things affect you as a property owner. Good evening, I'm Lynn Cumby. Quite a few of the things that we do in the residential affect your property values. The first thing is that the appraisal staff physically reviews all arm's length bona fide sales, all new construction, all appeals to first ensure that our data that we have on each individual property is correct. What is an arm's length bona fide sale? Glad you asked. <laughs> it's a transaction of good faith without fraud or deception by unrelated or unaffiliated parties as a willing buyer and a willing seller. We have to use all arm's length bona fide sales to calculate your value and keep up with what's going on in the market every year based on those sales. <clears throat> and we try to determine the change in the market and apply those changes to the current property values. Your appraisal staff has knowledge of Rockdale County as well as the market in Rockdale County. And we're there to help you resolve any issues that you might have regarding the characteristics of your property data. We also work hard as an appraisal staff to get all the numbers ready and in a timely manner so we can submit that to the tax commissioner in accordance with Georgia law so the tax commissioner can complete the digest process. Next slide, please. These are just some of the things that we do. One is, like I mentioned, we review all the bona fide sales every year. This chart is showing tax year 2020, 2021, and 2022. As you can see, in 2021, the middle slot for bona fide sales, it was above the sales that occurred in 2021, but yet it was below the sales that occurred in 2022. It was a 32% reduction in bona fide sales. The next are building permits. We review all the building permits, the new construction, whether it be a pool, an addition, a new house, a detached garage. We physically review all of those properties and gather the data for those individual building permits so we can <coughs> add that value to the property. There again, as you see, the 20, 21, and 22 are very different. This just is kind of showing you the level of the properties that we have to visit every year. The next section are appeals. 2020 was our biggest year of appeals. It went down in 2021, and it went up ever so slightly for 2022. Also, our administrative staff is tasked with the responsibility of not just dealing with the bona fide sales that occur, but they actually have to transfer every deed, every owner transfer that comes through. If it's Mary Smith transferring part of her property to her husband, John Smith, that's not a bona fide sale, but they still have to take that and deal with it and put it in our system and make that transfer. Um, they also process the homestead exemptions. And now that we've got that process online, we started doing that a couple of years ago, that process is being streamlined. And if you'll look at my chart, oh, I'm sorry. You already got me. Thank you. <laughs> I forgot. Um, that 
those um, homesteads have gone up. We're processing a few more homesteads, about 8% more in 2022 than we did in 2021. And then we also process every year all the returns for personal property. Those kind of stay about the same based on how many businesses come and go in the county, but every business in the county is to file a, a tax return every year. And we have uh, an appraiser who processes every one of those individually every year. And I'm going to turn it over to Mendez Jeffries. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Mendez Jeffries, as Director, Deputy Director Cummings just talked about. Uh, I want to speak about the conservation use. Conservation use is another um, avenue that Rockdale County offers to taxpayers to somehow get a discount on your property taxes. If you own 10 or more acres, uh, give our office a call and we can discuss to see if you further qualify for conservation use. And again, it will provide a discount on your property taxes. Next slide. So I want to discuss when to call us. As I just said, if you have 10 or more acres, give us a call so we can discuss conservation. We also call us if your property, to discuss your property value or your property characteristics. Call us about homestead exemption, which is also a discount on your property taxes. You must own and occupy that home to get a homestead exemption. And call us about any ownership issue that you may have. You can call us, you can email us, we have a very active website as well, and you see that information is on the board there with the email address and phone number. Next slide. And we're very excited about what we have coming soon. These are just two of the things we have coming soon, but the, the Board of Assessors will have our yearly notice of assessments on Q Public for the public to view. A notice of assessment is a letter we send out to every property owner once a year, giving you that year's current value. And again, we're going to have those available on the website and on QPublic, qpublic.net real soon. There'll also be a link on QPublic to link your parcel, which is how we identify your property address, to the tax commissioner's site so you can view your tax bills. So you can kind of like one-stop shopping there. And I relinquish the rest of my time to Deputy Director Terry. Good evening. My name is Max Terry. I'm the Deputy Director, Board of Assessor's Office. I'm responsible for the uh, personal property and commercial divisions uh, of the Board of Assessor's Office. Uh, the Board of Assessors, we have timelines that we have to meet uh, each year in order to, to value the properties. Uh, January 1st is the assessment date. So whatever the status of the property is, January 1st for real property and personal property, that's what the values are based on as of that date. Um, on or before January the 5th, the Board of Assessors meet and, uh, to approve values for the pre-built mobile home digest. And also by uh, either by the 5th of January, we have to submit that to the tax commissioner's office, uh, the digest for the mobile homes. Um, on April 1st is the deadline for uh, homestead exemptions for the current year. You can file and it, for your homestead all year round, but for the current year, April 1st is, is the deadline for that date. Uh, for personal property returns also had to be in by April 1st. And that's usually, um, you know, business personal property, but it includes boats, aircraft, um, you know, anything that businesses have that they need to claim personal property on, they have to do a return and have to have that in, the, in our office to us by April 1st. Uh, at least dated by April 1st. If it comes in the mail, we'll get them a couple of days later. Um, April 21st is the deadline for the Board of Assessors to hold their first meeting of the year. Uh, the suggested date is May the 15th to send out notices of assessment, any changes, uh, the changes that are made for the, for the year. Um, and that, you know, that depends on 
you know, that, that's just suggested, but the deadline is July 1st. We have to have the notices sent out by July 1st. That, that's what we have to do. Um, and after the, after the notice of assessments go out, they have, the, the taxpayer has 45 days to appeal that assessment from the date of the notice. So like if it was mailed May the 15th, they have 45 days from May the 15th to, to appeal that value. Uh, July 15th is the deadline to submit the digest to the tax commissioner. Um, and after the appeals are received, they must be reviewed. And also any changes made, I have to give them a 30-day 30, a 30 notice. And any, any unresolved uh, appeals have to be turned over to the Board of Equalization or the hearing officer by December the 15th, no later than December the 15th. Uh, September 1st, the digest has to be submitted to the state. Um, and also, the, the DNR, Department uh, of Natural Resources, is where the people, when you purchase a boat, you have to register with a DNR. Those come out, and then you have the, the ABOS, which is the values for the boats. Those come out and are available to be downloaded uh, around that time as well. Uh, October 20th tax bills are mailed out. December 20th is the last day to actually pay those taxes. Um, I've got some of it. Now, as I said earlier, end of December is uh, when we will mail out personal property returns for the next year. So we try to get them out in end of December, the 1st of January, to make sure the people can file their returns for, the, for that year. Um, during this time, uh, after we review the, the appeals, we also, the appraisers are going out and they're reviewing sales and they're also looking at new construction, anything that needs to be added during that time. Uh, they're doing that too between all this, you know, between appeals and hearings and so it, it keeps us busy. But uh, on the next one, please. This is pretty much what I've, what I've already said. The valuation date is January 1st. Uh, the notice of assessments, we usually send them out between April 15th and April 30th. It's usually towards the end of April when we, we try to get ours out. And then they have 45 days from that date that we said that's on postmark uh, to actually appeal that. And then of course the digest, like I said, has to be submitted to the tax commissioner by July 15th. So I'll turn this back over to Will. Thank you. Um, we want to do what we call a wrap up. Just normally when I'm doing a presentation, I like to give you guys at least some key takeaways, um, some highlights, some points that you could take back and just remember. Uh, we've touched on those, uh, some of these uh, several times tonight. One of the key points is that the valuation date for all property within the state of Georgia is actually January 1st. So everything is based upon the valuation date of January 1st, whatever is going on on that date, that is your valuation date. The next thing is that the last day to file for your homestead is April 1st. However, you can file for homestead year-round. We are accepting applications throughout the year. However, to qualify for homestead for that particular year, you need to at least own and occupy by January 1st and also apply by April 1st. And lastly, uh, Everything that we do is based on the fair market value. So the Board of Assessors makes every effort to determine whatever the fair market value is for that particular year. So we look at three different approaches to value in establishing what's considered fair market value. A lot of times with the commercial properties, we look at the income approach to determine what's the fair market value. We also look at the cost approach, looking at what it costs to build a particular house or a building. And we look at the market. That's one of the main focuses. Looking at the market, looking at sales, determining what properties are selling for. We value most neighborhoods based on the number of sales that occur within that particular neighborhood. Uh, but those are some of the takeaways and some of the things that we wanted to make sure that we left, I guess, the citizens with. And now I think we'll move forward with uh, the tax commissioner, and then I think we'll open the things up for questions.
Thank you, Director Barkley. You put me in the hot seat. Good evening. My name is Tisa Smart Washington. I am the tax commissioner here in Rockdale County. And um, my office works closely with the tax assessor's office. A lot of times people get confused as to what happens in our office or what happens in their office. And so we make sure that we work closely with each other because I'd rather um, get you the answer than bounce you around to, to um, different, different departments because in the end we're all Rockdale County. So the Tax Commissioner's Office is located at 969 Pine Street. We are right across the street from the new Board of Education um, and right at the end of Bank Street. If you've lived in Congress for a while, we are in the old library. And for a while, if you've lived here for a while, you know what for a while means. Our operating hours are, if you can go back for me. We are open um, 8.30 to, um, 8 to 4.30. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And we are open from 9.30 until 6 on Wednesdays. There was a time where we were closed for lunch. Um, I've been tax commissioner for seven, six years now. And since I've been tax commissioner, we have not been closed for lunch. But I do hear from people that still think that we close from one to two. And we don't. So if you um, have to pop on over when you're at lunch, you can come. We are there and ready to um, wait on you ready to serve. Our email address is rcmotorvehicletax at gmail.com and our website is rockdaletaxoffice.org. If you can go back one more time for me, please. <laughs> one of the things that I want to point out is that we do have three numbers in our office. So we have our phone number, which is the 770-278-7600. We have our fax number, 770-278-8956. And we also have a text number, and that is 678 9644712. We are actually the first tax commissioner's office in the state of Georgia to have a texting system. So if that's the way that you prefer to engage with us, you can send us a text and um, and we'll you know text you back. Now what a lot of people think is that um, it's a computer or that we're using AI and we actually have an employee that is answering your text messages. So if it takes you a little longer to get a response than um, what you're expecting, just know that we have a human and they're managing all the text messages and the Gmails and the emails that are coming in. So we will get to your text message. It may just take us a little bit of time. Next slide, thank you. So in my office, again, I am the tax commissioner. Um, my chief deputy tax commissioner is Eric Washington, and he's out here in the, in the audience. And our, our chief is what we call him. Chief is the tax commissioner when I'm not there, so if there are any questions that you have, if you need to get something resolved, he is the person um, to get it done for you. We also have two deputy tax commissioners. We have Connie Shepard, and she's also in the audience here. Um, Connie Shepard is our deputy tax commissioner over service. So we call anybody on the front line. When you come in, if you can see them, they are a part of our service team. And um, Connie Shepard is the one that leads the service team. And then we have Karen Johnson. She's our other deputy tax commissioner. She's in the office as well. If you've lived in Conyers for a while, then you know Karen Johnson, you know KK. And she works with our operations. So anything in the back, if you are a dealer or if you have some out of state issue, her team works on those issues for us. Um, and they work together to service the citizens of Rockdale County. And to round out our leadership team, we have Nicole O'Neill, and she is here as well. She is here on the front line, and she's my EA, and she's also the senior customer service representative in our office. And so a lot of times, if you call me and you need something done, I may transfer you to Nicole, and she'll make sure that she gets it done. She keeps me on task as well. So that is our leadership team in the tax commissioner's office. We also have an additional, what is that, six? So we also have nine other employees in our office that round out our team. And I know everybody thinks that they have the best team in the world. They just think that. I know that I have the best team in the world. They are amazing. And, and we hear it a lot of times that people will come into our office and they'll say, they'll come from another county, they'll come from a larger county, and they'll say, you guys are awfully nice. And we didn't expect to get the level of service that we got. Now, we don't always get it right, but we always try to get it right. I have seen the ladies on my team 
renew registrations at the car because there was an elderly customer who could not walk all the way to the building. I have seen my team run, uh, do emissions, or run emissions tests, um, results just to make sure that somebody can um, get done what they need to get done. I've seen them open the door late and uh, hold a tag because maybe somebody used the kiosk and they got a, they got a um, error message. And so they told them to come on over and they waited and they handed them that decal for the day. And those things matter when we talk about serving people. Because at the end of the day, we are responsible for making sure that you can stay in your home and making sure that you can get to and from, whether that's work, whether that's taking care of your, um, your relatives, um, whether that's just being able to be mobile in Atlanta, we know that that is important as well. And so we do take um, our job of serving citizens very seriously in my office. Okay, next slide. All right, so in my office, we are responsible for two types of property tax. We are responsible for um, motor vehicle taxes. A lot of people don't know that in Georgia, the motor vehicle um, registration is actually a property tax. As long as you own that vehicle, then you have to pay taxes on that vehicle. And that's one of the reasons why it ends up in my office. So we handle your title and registration. The big thing in our office is title ad valorem tax. When you purchase a car in 2023, you are going to pay seven, keep me honest, is 7%, 7% title ad valorem tax, and that's a one-time tax. Um, and then you don't have to pay any more taxes. If you've been here for a while, you know about birthday tax in Georgia. So we used to have to pay taxes every year on our birthday. Well, about 10 years ago, the state legislature got rid of that provision. And so you pay taxes when you buy the vehicle, and you don't have to pay taxes on that vehicle ever again. But you still have to come and see us to, re to get that new decal, and it's about $20 depending on the type of tag that you have. If you are a veteran and you're 100% um, service-connected disabled vet, then you qualify for 100% exemption on this TAVT tag, on this TAVT. And it's actually, it's actually title ad valorem tax fee is the way that it is described by the state of Georgia. But this title ad valorem tax, you don't have to pay on your vehicle if you are 100% service-connected disabled vet. You do get that for one vehicle, and um, you're not allowed to get it on any other vehicle, but if you qualify for that provision, come and see us. There are a lot of veterans in our community that may not know that they qualify for that exemption, and if you bought a vehicle within the last three years, then you're able to appeal that um, in our office, and we'll, we'll issue you a refund if you paid it and you were, um, you were eligible to receive the exemption. We also handle um, sales. So if you buy a vehicle from a dealership, then your dealership will deal directly to, with us and they'll make sure that you get your title, that vehicle titled in your name and that you get um, in the system so that you can get a tag. Sometimes the, the dealership will pay for a tag for you. Other times you would have to come in and you would have to purchase that plate on your own. But your dealership will let you know what, this, what the case is. Um, we also handle casual sales. So if you buy a vehicle from your neighbor, from um, somebody at church, or if you buy the vehicle, you get the vehicle from a relative, a close relative, then you would bring that title into our office and we will issue you registration and we will get that title work um, completed and that vehicle title in your name. Now, one of my little pet peeves as tax commissioner is when I see people driving with those... Um, what do, you, what do you call it? those uh, tag applied for signs on their vehicles? That is not a thing in Georgia. I know that we see it oftentimes, but really my husband is a law enforcement officer and you will get pulled over um, more easily if you have that on your car than if you have no tag on your car. And it is because if you buy a vehicle or you're you are gifted a vehicle, you come into our office with that title, we will immediately issue a plate. So there is no need for you to apply for a tag and wait for that tag. So if you see that, please tell your neighbors that's not a thing. Um, the other thing that we see in our office, um, a lot of issues we see with insurance. 
So in Georgia, you have to have an, um, an insur a, a Georgia insurance policy. If you've moved into our community from another state and you have insurance in that state, it will not um, be valid for you to drive on the road in Georgia. You need a Georgia, uh, Georgia insurance policy in order for you to um, be issued registration in Georgia. If you have a lapse in insurance, we see that a lot as well, you actually have 10 days to have that cleared up with your insurance company. If not, your insurance company will report to our database and then you're, you have a fee, you have to pay a $25 fee. If that fee is not paid within 30 days, then your registration will be suspended. So a lot of times we see that maybe people change policies or if they get a new vehicle, they don't have the, um, the proper VIN, uh, VIN number on the vehicle. There may be um, some issues with the VIN number. Not that you don't have a proper VIN number, but on the policy it may be a different VIN number than it's actually on the car and so it doesn't match in our database. Um, those are all issues that you have to um, deal with your insurance company um, to get cleared up before we're allowed to issue you registration. And the last thing I wanted to say about motor vehicles, our title and registration is our kiosk. We are um, lucky to have a kiosk right here in our county. It is, we actually have two kiosks in our county. So the first kiosk is at the Kroger on 138 in Conyers Square. And it is open and available as long as Kroger is open. And you can go there, it will print your decal immediately, and you don't even have to come and see us. We also are lucky enough to be the only county in the state that has an emissions testing location that also has a kiosk. So you can go and get your emissions test and renew your registration all in one visit. And that is the emission station that's behind Crystal's. Um, and, and, and again, we're lucky enough to have the only one in the state of Georgia right now. Um, as far as emissions, yes, we are an emissions county. And so that means that if your car is a 1999 to a 2020 model year vehicle, then you are required to have emissions tests in, um, in our county. If you recently purchased a vehicle from a friend or a relative and they had an emissions test, as long as that emissions test is still valid, you can use it to renew your registration. And if you are a senior, if you um, work out of state, or if you have a student and the student is at school out of state with the vehicle, you may qualify for a waiver. So if you check Clean Air, Georgia Clean Air Force, cleanairforce.com, it will give you the provisions for a waiver so you don't have to make your kid come home so you can just get an emissions test. You can have them fill out that waiver. They have to submit a couple of documents from school, but then you'll be able to um, renew your registration without getting the emissions test for that year. And I think that I have covered everything on this slide. Please, next slide, Janetta, thank you. We are also responsible for collecting your property taxes. Now I tell people all the time when I meet them that I'm sure that they get mail from me and they say, yes, they do. I get the same mail too, so don't, so. Don't feel bad, but the property tax bill is issued in my office, and this is where we work very closely with each other's office. Um, we generate the bill, but the, the pieces that we use to generate that bill come from different areas, and I'll talk about that in just a second. Homestead, Homestead affects your bill, but that is the applications are actually um, received in the tax assessor's office. Can you go to the next slide for me? Now what a lot of people don't realize is that the tax collection process is actually a year long process. And so a couple of years ago, we came up with this um, campaign um, just to educate citizens on the process and we call it set, set, collect. The first set is for our board of assessors. They set the values on your property. The second set is for the board of commissioners, the school board and the city. Those entities set the millage rate. And in my office, we take the two and we generate a bill and we are the collect and that happens at the end of the year. And why it's important for you to understand this process is that by the time we get to the collect phase, there's very little that you can do to impact that bottom line. So we wanna make sure that 
during the stages, during the setting stages where you have an opportunity to um, appeal your value or you have an, uh, an opportunity to attend meetings, that you take advantage of those opportunities because when it gets to our office, then it's just a little bit too late to do anything for that year. We can definitely set you, um, set you up to impact the tax bill for the next year, but as far as the current year, then there's very little that we can do. The next slide. And so this is just a visual on this process. I think um, Max talked about this a little bit. So on January 1st, the Board of um, Assessors set the value somewhere around there, and everything that we do is based on that January 1st value. Around February the 15th is when we send out the mobile home bills. So if you have a mobile home that is treated as a mobile home, you would pay the mobile home bill in February, and then you would pay the bill that the, the land that the mobile home sits on that will be billed at the end of the year. Unless you have done um, what we call homestead, if it's a homesteaded mobile home. And if you have put homestead on the mobile home, meaning that you own the mobile home and the piece of land, and you want, it treated, you want to treat it like a regular piece of property, then you won't receive that bill until later in the year. April 1st is our April 1st? April 1st. April, am I right? April 1st, okay, thank you. I'm getting confused with April the 15th. Okay. April 1st is our homestead deadline. So you have until April the 1st of every year to apply for homestead if you have not already applied for homestead. If you've already applied for homestead, then it stays in place. You don't have to do it every year. But for um, our new residents or if you um, changed homes, then that April 1st deadline is your deadline. It is also the deadline if you have homestead in place, but you qualify for a higher homestead exemption. So if you qualify for a standard exemption and then um, you turn 65 by January the 1st, and now you qualify for a senior exemption, you would need to apply for that exemption again by April 1st of that year. Then June, July, August, oh, let me go back a little step. Also in April is when the tax assessor, and they, they've already shared this information, is when the um, assessment notices go out. A lot of times people um, don't pay attention to the assessment notice because it says this is not a bill. So they don't pay attention, but what happens is that that is an important component of how we calculate your property tax bill. So it's very important that you review your assessment notice before that appeal deadline expires. And it's about 45, it's 45 days after that bill, is, that assessment notice is sent out. Then in June, July, August is when our entity set the millage rate. So that is um, our school board, our Board of Commissioners and the city will set their millage rates. And then in August is when I strive to submit the tax digest to the state. So I take all of the information that the tax assessor's office, they provide me and there are a couple of other pieces that we have to pull together. And we set that, we submit that digest to the state. Now the deadline for that is September the 1st, but we always try to get um, the digest submitted and approved by the state. Um, well before that September 1st deadline. Then we mail out our tax bills on September the 15th. You have 60 days to pay that tax bill. So our due date is usually November the 15th. If we ever um, get the tax bills out early, then you get extra time. You still have until November the 15th. If for um, a reason that we get those tax bills out later and they have been in the past where we've um, had to push back the deadline, um, a couple of months or a month because the tax bills um, went out late, then you'll still get the 60 days. And then on January 1st, the process starts all over again. One of the questions that we see often in my office is um, es about escrow, one of the issues that we see. If you have an escrow account on your property, your mortgage company more than likely will contact us to get um, the information about all of the tax, the tax bills in the county and they will make sure that they remit payment on your behalf. 
There, um, sometimes we get calls because we send the property tax bill to the owner. We are required to send it to the owner of record, and that's whoever the owner was on January the 1st. So if you've lived in your house for a while, then we send the tax bill to you. If you recently purchased your home, we actually send the tax bill to the old owner, whole old homeowner, because they own the property on January the 1st, and that's who we have to send the bill to. One of the things that we've come to realize over the years is that if that transfer has been made in the middle of the year, the new owner may not have received that tax bill. And so at the beginning of the new year, we'll go ahead and send out tax bills to new owners because you may not realize that you have an outstanding property tax bill. So we just want to make sure that we are providing as much information as possible to our taxpayers. If you have an escrow account, your mortgage company will pay that bill for you. Sometimes we see individuals that come in because they get the tax bill, they'll come in and they'll pay the tax bill. It is our um, policy in the tax commissioner's office to refund whoever paid us last. So we tell people all the time, please check with your escrow, with your mortgage company before you pay the bill. Because if you pay the bill and then your escrow, comp your mortgage company pays the bill, we'll issue the refund to your mortgage company. And that will take a little bit longer for it to um, be refunded back to you. And the other thing that we get a lot of questions about in my office is tax sales. We are responsible for tax sales. Well, I'll tell you my philosophy on tax sales. I hope that every time we have a tax sale schedule, that we get to the tax sale and we have no properties to sell. And that means that we have done everything that we can and we have been successful in either setting that homeowner or that property owner up for it on a uh, payment plan, that we've worked with you to get that tax bill paid. But having a tax sale is really a last resort in my office. Now I'll say this, we had a tax sale in August of last year. We started with about 500 properties, and when we got to tax sale, we only had four, and none of them were residential properties. So we are um, doing a good job of making sure that we're reaching out as much as we can to see, um, to do whatever we can to make you, um, to help you take care of that tax obligation. But there are times that we have to take properties to tax sale because it is um, a provision in the law and a lot of people are interested in purchasing properties uh, at tax sale. So this year we have three scheduled. We're gonna have one in June, one in July, and another in August. So a part of that process this year that we've started new is that we've sent out um, notices at the beginning of the year. And um, we've gotten a lot of um, frenzy in our office because we sent out those notices. If you receive the notice, it just means that we still have some record of a delinquent tax in our office. Now, it could be that your mortgage company missed the payment. It could be that sometimes we've seen where a, um, another property owner will pay that bill in error. And because they paid that bill in error, then we've already refunded your, your mortgage company. And so we'll work through those issues with you. So if you did receive, and it's called an intent to 5A notice, if you did receive that notice, just give us a call. We can sit down, we can go over um, um, any issues that you may have. And we just wanna make sure that the records that we have are as correct, are as accurate as possible. Next. Okay, so this is the end of my presentation. Now there was one thing that I did miss at the beginning of my presentation, and I wanted to share with you the mission in our office. So the mission in the tax commissioner's office is to efficiently collect revenue for the state, county, school system, and city while providing exceptional customer service through the use of innovative technology. We are committed to ensuring accuracy and responsiveness in all of our processes and are dedicated to making the tax experience as seamless as possible for our clients. We strive to continuously improve our performance by setting and exceeding metrics that reflect our commitment to serving our residents with integrity and efficiently. And we are guided by the principles and we call them SMART. And the S in SMART is for service, the M is for mission and metrics, A is for accessibility, accountability, and accuracy. R is for responsiveness and T is for technology and transparency. And everything that we do in our office, we, even though we work smart, we're striving to work smarter. And the E and R in the smarter is um, education and respect. 
because we want to make sure that we value everyone who walks through our door and that we're working to make sure that you understand the process and that we, um, when you leave our office, that you are, that you, that you feel valued, that you feel valued. Um, so contact me and contact us. Now I went to an event last week. I went to a meeting last week and the um, individual said, if you received excellent customer service, please tell everybody. If you didn't, please feel free to tell me. So the contact me, if you have your smartphone, you can take a picture of the QR code and it will download my contact information directly to your phone. And that information will um, reach me. That's my, my personal information. If you have, um, if you wanna get something done in the office, if you have a question about your renewal, you have a question about your property taxes, then you can contact the office and this QR code will download the contact information for my office directly to your phone. And that is the end of my presentation. Are there any questions for the tax commissioner's office? So what we're going to do is take questions from the audience. I have the cards. You all can answer from your seats with the microphone. So I'm just gonna read the questions. Okay. What is the Georgia required amount for car insurance? Does the tax office have a list of when a certain vehicle only needs liability? So there is no requirement. Um, that really has to do with your financing. If you're financing the vehicle, they usually require that you have full coverage. But if you've owned that vehicle for a while, then people carry liability because it doesn't make any sense to have full coverage. The only requirement is that you have insurance and it has to be a Georgia policy. Now what a lot of people don't, um, they may not know is that the insurance does not necessarily have to be in your name. The vehicle just needs to be insured. Okay. Yeah. This is a question for the tax assessor. Which Department prepares the five-year history of the tax digest. Who places the legal ad? Okay, so I prepare the five-year history. That happens in the tax commissioner's office. But the individual entities place their own ads. And that's, that's required by statute. Okay. How do you find out if a tax overpayment has been returned to your mortgage company? Oh, you can just call our office. Give us a call and we can, um, we can review your record and we'll be able to tell you. Okay. This is for the tax assessor. How long after a home sale or resale is the Q Public database updated? Well, the appropriate answer is it dependent upon what time of the year that you actually, uh, the sale occurs. Because um, at the latter part of the year, um, we are still working on appeals, um, and what we found is that when we update the system with the most current information that we're working on, that confuses the public uh, as far as being able to challenge the, those appeals. They're getting mixed information based upon the, f the next year's sales, and they're trying to utilize that information to challenge the valuation of the current year. So it's updated normally about three or four times a year, but the latter part of the year is not as up to date. And one of the main things you have to remember, that information is going to be based upon who owns the property as of January 1st. So the ownership of January 1st is going to be the most prevalent information that we're going to put out there. However, it does change periodically throughout the year. But if I could also, uh, hopefully I've answered that question, uh, but I also wanted to take this opportunity to also recognize some of my staff that's actually in the audience as well. Uh, Ms. Debbie Poole, one of our commercial appraisers, Ms. Siobhan White, our personal property appraiser, and Ms. Celeste Printup, one of our administrative uh, clerks. So I wanted to recognize them as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the point, the follow-up to the first question about the liability, what is the state minimum requirements for insurance? There is no, there is no state minimum. You just, am I right? Keep me honest. Okay, yeah, so you just have to have insurance. Can we get paperwork for exemptions for elders and disabled citizens online? Yes, that information is available on the tax assessor's website and it's also available on my website. Yeah. So um, do you know the, the, the area on your website where it's available? Yeah, that information is currently on the website. 
However, uh, just remember that those, the laws are changing constantly. I know that there is a new law that's in effect for 2023 that's going to have an effect on the elderly as far as that exemption being increased, as well as those that are disabled. Uh, the portion that's going to be affiliated with the school is going up from 35000 to 50000 So that, that information is normally updated. And you also can get that information out of the Board of Assessors' Office. We keep a running tab as far as all of the exemptions that Rockdale offer each year. Is a mass reappraisal done every year? What is it based on? Well, normally what we do is what we're going to reappraise based upon sales that occur in an area. Mass appraisal, uh, the mass reappraisal is not done every year. Based on Georgia law, we're required to review every piece of property once every three years. So um, if we have a bunch of sales in a particular neighborhood, one neighborhood may be more hot than compared than another neighborhood. So that neighborhood is going to get reviewed a lot more because we have a lot of sales. So if it continues to keep selling year after year, it's going to get reviewed even more than maybe a neighborhood that doesn't have as many sales. But eventually, within a three-year time frame, each property should be reviewed during that time. Does the tax commissioner's office receive more money for placing the stormwater fee on the property tax bill? Do we receive more money? What is that? I don't know what that means, but that's the question. Now we do receive, we do receive a fee, and it is um, from stormwater for providing that service to stormwater. And that is just for the extra work on my staff. And I'd have to say for the last two years, I've used that money to um, provide extra pay to my staff just because they're doing more work. Do you have to reapply for the 50,000 senior school exemption if they already have the 35,000 exemption? No, you do not have to reapply. As long as you already have that current exemption in place, you don't have to reapply unless you sell your property or something changes as far as with the ownership of your property, then you may have to reapply. But if you don't do any of those things, uh, you're automatically going to be exempted to 50,000 instead of the 35,000. So this is the last question that I have. What impact will the 50,000 senior school exemption have on the digest? Well, so, I, no, go ahead. I can't really say, a, I can't give you a number or say it's going to have a positive or negative impact because uh, one of the things you have to really look at when you're valuing property, everything is moving. And it's moving from the standpoint, the market is moving, the values may increase. Um, if you look over the last couple of years, we had a year where the values increased almost 20%. And this was throughout the nation, uh, the values have increased. So having the values increase, and although the exemption is going to increase, it may not increase at the same rate, so it may not have an effect at all. If you're just looking at just from a dollar's standpoint of whether or not it's going to be negative or positive, I can't really say that. And I would add, um, just to add to that, when we're talking about the digest, it's really the value of those properties. So whether you um, have a 35000 exemption or a 50000 exemption does not have an impact on the total value of that that property. What it impacts is how much of the bill will you pay. And, and so, and like Will said, we won't know until we start to run the numbers and we go through that process to see um, how many seniors now qualify for the exemption because there were seniors that were at 35,000 that um, more seniors, people may have now qualified for that exemption that weren't eligible last year. So all of those things have an impact on um, the revenue, which is probably the question that they're asking. That was our last question. I do want to add one thing. Um, almost everything that we do in the tax assessors and the tax commissioner's office is a, um, it's a, it's a process, it's a cycle. And so when you purchase your home, that information actually goes to the clerk's office and then that information is transmitted to the tax assessor's office and that information is transmitted to my office. So, um, and there's, there's a process that happens along the way. Um, so when it comes to appeals, for example, if you've appealed the value on your home, once the tax assessor has made a determination um, on the new value of your 
property, then that information is transmitted to our office and then we process um, your tax bill in our office. So all of that just takes a little bit of time. Um, I think last year we had about a thousand assessments, I mean, I'm sorry, um, appeals that we had to process. And we have about, we have two people in my office that process those assessments. That's me and then that's uh, Chief. And so um, one of the things that I try not to do is make any adjustments to the digest before we get the approval from the state. This is a little inside ball, but the tax assessors, he sends the digest information to the state and then I submit the same information. And if our information does not match, then there's an issue and that can hold up the process. So I try not to make any changes to the digest until after the tax bills go out. So if you won your appeal anytime between, um, say, April and September, I actually will send you a full bill and then I'll go back, I'll make the adjustments and I'll send a new bill out. And that's just so that we make sure that we're not missing any and that we can um, get them done, done in a timely manner and that we can get that approval from the state. I think she answered it. But yeah, you, you can call my office and I'll let you know if it's overpaid. But, and, and that was one of the things that I said that if you pay and then your mortgage company pays, then we will send the refund to your mortgage company. Likewise, if your mortgage company pays and then you come in and you try to pay, then there's nothing for us to apply that payment to and we'll just give it back to you at the window. Yes. No, that would be something that your mortgage company will notify you. And, and even that process takes a while because what a lot of people don't know is that um, mortgage companies use third-party servicers. So a lot of times we may have received the payment not from your mortgage company but from the third-party servicer. And so when we issue the refund, we issue that refund back to the third-party servicer and then they have to issue that refund back to your mortgage company. So that process can take a little bit of time. But if you give us a call, we'll at least be able to tell you where in process we are. And just uh, one more thing for refunds. When we process the refund, we, anything that we process in the current month, we will refund the following month by the 15th. So if you're expecting a refund from our office and you haven't received this, give us a call. And we'll check to see if it's already been processed, if, if it's already been mailed out, or if it's just um, waiting until the next month so that we can send those refunds to you. And I have to say that the ladies in accounting are awesome, and so they usually get them out before the 15th. We would like to thank you for the first, I'm um, attending the first info session. We hope that your questions were answered and you gain a little bit more insight into the Board of Assessors and the Tax Commissioner's Office. Please remember, you can go back and view these sessions on the Rockdale County Facebook page, the county website, Rockdale Channel 23, YouTube and Vimeo. Our next session will be right here in this location on March 15th with presentations from the tax, from the talent management and finance department. Thank you again for coming and we hope to see you the next time. Good night.